Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, for another laser cutting video today. Uh, every so often, Creality are kind enough to send out their latest machine, and uh, today is no different. Uh, they recently launched the Falcon A1, which you can see working away here. Uh, and I think this is a real game changer for hobbyists and those of us in the model railway community especially. Uh, before we get started though, just a quick reminder to please subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy this video. Uh, it really does help out and of course you get to see more of the stuff that you like. So, Creality's previous machines have all been fantastic, but the A1 takes a major step towards making laser cutting something that anyone can do. Uh, much how like in the early days of 3D printing, getting everything set up right took a little bit of work and troubleshooting, where nowadays we're at the point where pretty much anyone can buy a 3D printer and get going fairly quickly. Well, that's what it feels like Creality have done here with the A1. Uh, it's a consumer-friendly product aimed at a more casual market. And with the launch of their Falcon Design Space software too, uh, which I will be looking at in this video as well, it very much feels like a complete package, which I'm very excited to dive into. Now, this video has been sponsored by Creality, so I'm not going to do a traditional review style video today, as obviously my judgment is a bit skewed. Uh, but I am going to run through the various features of the Falcon A1 and show you why this machine might be worth considering, especially when it comes to the world of model railways. Like the Falcon 2 Pro that came out last year, the Falcon A1 has a full enclosure, but it's gone through a complete redesign. There's literally no assembly needed here at all. All I did was attach the exhaust hose to the back and plug it in. That's it. That's literally it. And personally, I think this is a big step forward. Uh, yeah, while the Falcon 2 Pro had an enclosure as well, you had to assemble it yourself, and I did have some issues with getting it all to fit properly. Uh, in comparison, the A1 is a machine that you can literally just get out of the box and get working with it straight away. Uh, the main body is still made out of metal, uh, which is really nice and I assume probably a requirement when you're working with lasers. Uh, and then we've also got the two orange panels, uh, one on the top and one on the front, and they block the laser light from damaging your eyes, which is of course handy. Uh, these two panels also act as doors as well. So you've got the one here that opens up at the front, that's really handy for sliding in your material. And then when you close it up, it is also magnetic as well, so it clicks securely into place. The top panel then also hinges upwards as well, giving you a lot more access to the workspace. And if the machine detects either of the doors being opened while the laser is in use, it'll automatically shut everything down. So that's a great safety feature. Uh, we also have a camera on the lid here, which is really useful for lining up your designs. But with the Falcon Design Space software, you can actually show the camera a material card, uh, like one of these. Uh, the software will then read the QR code that is here and then set all the correct parameters in the project for the material that you're cutting or engraving onto. Uh, and you'll see how well this works later on when we get into some practical demos. Uh, the laser module itself is only 10 watts, uh, so that is a little bit less powerful than the previous machines that I've used. I think they were 22 watts and 40 watts respectively. Um, but honestly, for the sort of projects that you're going to be cutting on this laser, I think 10 watts is totally fine. Um, for model railway stuff in particular, generally we're working with thinner materials. Uh, anything around 5 millimeter thickness, I think will be okay with this machine. I'm actually cutting onto 2 millimeter MDF here at the moment, um, so yeah. What you do get with a 10 watt laser though is a much smaller focus point which gives you much better detail and fidelity which of course is great for scale modelling. Uh, there's a built in fan and exhaust system too with the hose just fitting out the back that's running out the window at the moment uh, and you also get the Creality Air Assist as well which is the only thing that isn't built into the machine. I'm guessing that's because of the vibrations it creates and it's the same air assist that Creality have used on all air machines so far. Um, it works really well so if it ain't broke don't fix it. Uh, the only thing I will say with the fan, the air assist and the built-in LED, there is a light in this as well, um, I can't see any manual way to control these. Um, on something like the Falcon 2 Pro, for example, there was physical switches on the case for the lights and the fan. So, well, for the most part, this is controlled by the software. On the A1, if I do need to vent some extra fumes or something, I can't actually see how I would turn the fan on. Uh, maybe there's something in the software that does allow me to do that, but I haven't had a chance to really play around with it fully yet. I do think my favourite feature is the overall size though. Um, the previous laser cutters that I had, they did kind of dominate my workspace a bit, where the Falcon A1, well it's a bit like a large printer really. I mean it sits quite happily here on the desk without taking up loads of space and yeah it's just a nice little self-contained unit. Um, being smaller of course you do lose a little bit of the working area inside, 
But again, I don't think that the A1 is designed for people who are going to be cutting huge, massive projects. Um, it's for people who might put this in a hobby room, uh, sat next to a 3D printer, say. And this plays into that casual market that I feel like Creality are aiming this machine at. Uh, that ethos is reflected in the price too. Uh, the previous Falcon machines, I think, were both around like £1,200, which is a lot, uh, especially for something when it comes to like model railways where it's not a requirement to have one of these, it's a nice to have. Um, the Falcon A1 though, this costs £530, or at least that is the price at the time of filming this video, uh, which is considerably less. And I feel like that makes laser cutting a more realistic option for the average hobby user. Of course, laser cutting isn't a requirement if you're building a model railway, much like 3D printing or owning your own 3D printer isn't a requirement for building a model railway. But if it's something that you're interested in, the Falcon A1 does feel like it's set at a more realistic and achievable price point for that. Uh, much like how home 3D printing has become more common for model railways in the past decade, I think we could be seeing the start of that for laser cutting with the Falcon A1. This is a machine that is designed from the ground up to be easy to use and to fit in an average home workshop or hobby space like I've got here. Of course, that is a load of information that I've just gone through there, but why don't we take a look at the machine in action? Um, I've got some ideas for stuff to make. Uh, I'm going to start out fairly simple and then hopefully by the end I'll be able to make something a bit more complicated. So let's dive in. So this is Falcon Design Space, and for anyone who has used Lightburn in the past, this will probably look a little bit familiar. Uh, but even if you're brand new to laser cutting, the good news is that this software is really easy to get your head around. Obviously, it's designed to work with the Creality machine, so setting those up is really simple, although it is missing some of the more advanced features of Lightburn. That said, the software is still in beta, or beta, however you want to say it, uh, so those could be added at some point in the future. And of course, you can still use Lightburn with this machine if you want to, uh, but obviously you have to pay for Lightburn where Creality software is completely free. So in my opinion, it's worth starting out with this, even if it's just to get the basics down. Also, if you're not ready to start creating your own designs just yet, Creality do have an inspiration tab here where you can download ready-made designs to make on your own machine, which is cool. There isn't anything specifically for model railways here, but again, it's really useful to see how other people are designing stuff when you're getting started. One thing I do want to set up though is the camera, and for this to work properly I have to use the provided calibration card. Essentially, you put this in the machine and then the software will ask you to take lots of pictures with it in different positions. Once that's done, it'll cut these target markers, and then you just mark them on the screen so that the software can line the camera up to the workspace, and that's pretty much it. So, I've got a really simple coaster design to make here. It's pretty much just a circle with my logo inside, but as an initial test, this will be fine. I'm going to do this on some 3mm plywood initially, and I'll also just place the material card under the camera too. In design space, an alert then pops up asking me if I want to change the engrave and cut settings for all the layers or just the ones selected. I'll select all layers, and now everything has been updated ready to cut. I don't want to waste this wood though, so I'll cut the coaster right in the corner, and I'm ready to go. The Falcon A1 springs into action, and it'll start engraving my design. On this material, it takes about 15 minutes to do this simple logo coaster, and the Design Space software actually gives you a rough timer showing how much longer it's going to take, which is very handy. At this point though, you can get on with other stuff and just leave the machine to do its job. It's probably a good idea to be nearby just in case there is an issue, but if you have it in your hobby room for example, you could also be building a kit or running some trains while you wait for it to finish. Soon enough the process is complete so I can open up the Falcon A1 and see if it worked. The logo has been engraved really nicely which is fantastic, and the outer cut is nice and clean too, so those settings which I inputted using the material card appear to be bang on. I wanted to do this same design on some nicer wood though, especially as Creality had also sent me some of their walnut board to try out as well. 
Strangely, this didn't come with a material card, but you can just select a preset in the software itself. And of course, these can be used if you're working with material from other sources, for example. But yeah, once again, the Falcon A1 got to work on the design with minimal fuss. So I've got the two different coasters here, and I'm actually really happy with how these came out. Um, the burn settings worked really well. I'll show you some close-ups of these on camera, but um, yeah, I literally just selected the material in the software and let the A1 do its thing. And yeah, I really appreciated not having to do any material tests, which can always be a bit of a pain when you get a new machine, uh, working out all the settings for your different materials. Um, you do still have to be a little bit aware of the material you're engraving though. Uh, for example, here is the first coaster that I did on the nicer walnut board and uh, you can see the logo didn't sort of properly engrave there with the text. For the second one I did slightly adjust the logo image so it didn't engrave the full background just the words and the outline and obviously that came out much better so you do still need a bit of awareness as to what works on different materials. The main thing that I'm really impressed with though is how quiet the Falcon A1 is when working um, right now, it's making a building for my new model railway, uh, which I'll be showing you in a little bit more detail later on, but it's got some quite complicated stone patterns built into it, and it's barely making any noise at all here. Um, the previous Falcon laser cutters were both much louder. I certainly wouldn't be able to have a conversation like this or talk to the camera without raising my voice. And yeah, it's much more pleasant being in this room with the machine working away, which is great for a home or hobby environment. Um, I feel like this is down to the air assist control, which rather than being just on all the time, does take into account what power you're using the laser at. Um, when it starts cutting through the material later on, for example, the air assist will kick up a notch, but it's much more bearable when it only comes on for a few minutes at a time and at the end, you know, just in comparison to it being on constantly. Now, I don't know if this is something that is happening within the Falcon Design Space software or if it would be the same if you're using, say, Lightburn too. Um, I'll have to investigate with that, but yeah, much quieter and it makes being in the same space as the Falcon A1 much more pleasant. So, like I said, I've currently got the machine working on a building for my new model railway. And you can see it's got a really nice stone pattern that I'm engraving onto the surface, which will give it a bit of texture as well as looking great. Now, this will eventually go on my version of Farquhar, replicating one of the station buildings that Audrey had on his layout. I couldn't find a modern day equivalent for this in terms of a kit or a ready-made building, so I thought, why not just laser cut my own? After about 45 minutes, the Falcon A1 was done, and here are the pieces for the four walls. I have tabs and slots at each corner, which I can simply glue together to create the main structure. Again, I used a Creality preset for this MDF, and interestingly, I didn't have to adjust the kerf settings at all. The pieces all fit together perfect first time, so I don't know if I just got very lucky there, or if that's something the software is taking into account for the different materials. I also have the roof sections, and I actually went to the trouble of cutting strips of tiles for these, so that I can layer them over each other. It does take a bit of time gluing each of these strips in place, but the result is definitely worth it as you get a nice overlap just like in reality. With the glue on the main structure dry, I added a bit of relief to the mantles above the doors and below the windows. These just add some extra detail to the building and were really easy to cut to the exact same size thanks to the laser cutter. To cover over the joins and also add some extra relief, I've cut some cornerstones from the same material. These are just folded and then glued over the edges to hide those joins. With that done, I took the building off to be painted. Uh, I'm actually using a new technique for this particular layout and I'm really pleased with the look it's giving me. With the roofs painted in a black undercoat as well, these two pieces were glued in place. And then it was just a case of fitting the doors and the windows. Again, these were cut using the same thinner material as the roof tiles, obviously just painted green this time. The windows also have some clear acetate glued in behind them as well to act as glass. And this is the finished result, at least for the moment anyway. I'm sure I'll add more detail to this building once I do the overall scenics for this part of the layout, but I think it really shows the potential that a laser cutter can have for modelers. 
This is a custom made building, a real one of a kind model which I was able to put together in a matter of hours thanks to the Falcon A1. And yes, scratch building has always been a thing, albeit without the use of fancy technology, and I should say I don't think laser cutting is going to replace that discipline entirely. Of course, where machines like the Falcon A1 really do shine though is making lots of identical things. Those might be very fiddly time consuming things like making lots of sets of windows for example, or perhaps entire buildings like a row of terraced houses that all need to look exactly the same. But for those of you who are interested in laser cutting for model railways, I really think the Falcon A1 is the perfect machine for this. It's very squarely aimed at the hobby market, it's easy to get up and running and it's very user friendly. Not to mention that the smaller size and the lower price make this a much more realistic option for a home user. Like I said at the start, I do think this is a real game changer for laser cutting and I'm excited to see if this is the start of it taking off in the coming years. But let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Are you interested in laser cutting and how would you rate the Falcon A1? Once again, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video and a big thank you to Creality for making this video possible. Now I'm going to get back to work on the new layout, so thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!